Hi Bobcats! In this video, we're going to take a look at how to solve reaction stoichiometry problems. This is a um, standard type of chemistry problem, and there are many different ways to solve it. The way that I'm going to show you may be a little different than what you're used to seeing, but the bottom line is you should use whatever problem-solving technique makes the most sense to you. So if you've never seen reaction stoichiometry before, try my way. Um, and if you've done stoichiometry before, and after looking at some of these problems, you think, oh yeah, I know how to do this differently, by all means, do it the way that you're most comfortable with. When we solve stoichiometry problems, our objective is to use the ratios expressed by the coefficients of a balanced equation to convert between the amounts of reactants and products. So there really are many different ways to solve these problems. Most textbooks that you find in the United States solve these problems in a very specific way that uses dimensional analysis and it takes small steps and links these small steps together. It's an extremely powerful technique because you can easily expand it to solve a huge variety of stoichiometry problems. And this technique is what you've probably seen um, if you already have in mind some idea about how to solve stoichiometry problems. Well, I'm going to work things just a little bit differently. And they will, my approach to this is going to have fewer steps. And um, so this may be new for most students. Um, and honestly, it's not what you're going to find in most tutorials, like if you go out and watch YouTube videos and that sort of thing. Um, but I think you're going to find, if you stick with me through this, it's a pretty straightforward way of working these problems. Now, the bottom line is you need to do what works best for you. One of the big challenges when you're taking a test is trying to decide, ooh, what kind of a problem is this? Is this a mole conversion problem or is this a stoichiometry problem? Because they really look very similar. So the question to focus on is how many chemicals is the question talking about? If the question is only mentioning one chemical, what you're gonna do is a mole conversion problem like we've done previously, when you write your conversion factor, the top part and the bottom part of the conversion factor will have one number. That one number comes from the radiation sign. So if you have one chemical, you use one number in the top and you use one number in the bottom. But if you have two chemicals, for instance, the problem says uh, Methane reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. And the problem says, if you start with 25 grams of methane, how many grams of oxygen are needed to completely react? Well, now we're talking two chemicals. We're talking methane and oxygen. So if you're talking two chemicals, when we build our conversion factor, we need to stick two numbers in the top and two numbers in the bottom. The first of those numbers is just like what we did with mole conversions, and we're gonna pull it from the radiation sign. The second number will be the coefficient from the balanced equation. I'd like to take a moment and justify putting two numbers in the top and in the bottom of our conversion factor. When we look at this equation, nitrogen plus three hydrogens yield two ammonias. What does this mean? What, 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 do the, what are the coefficients trying to tell us? Well, the coefficient in front of nitrogen is a 1. When nothing's written, it's understood to be a 1. We're going to interpret that as moles. One mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to make two moles of ammonia. Now I'm going to do a little math trick. Out of each one of these expressions, I'm going to factor out one mole. So we have one times one mole of nitrogen, three times one mole of hydrogen, and two times one mole of ammonia. Mathematically, these two lines are saying the exact same thing. It's just the format I wrote them in that on the second line emphasizes a connection to the radiation sign because one mole appears in the center of the radiation sign 
and the number that we just wrote out in front of one mole is the coefficient from the balanced equation. So all we did to rewrite this was we took the coefficient times something from the radiation sign, which in this case is one mole. But we know on the radiation sign that all four quantities are equivalent. One mole, the molar mass in grams, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, and 22.4 liters if the substance is a gas at STP. So in place of the one mole of each of these substances, I can substitute the molar mass. So in the parentheses, I'm replacing one mole of nitrogen with 28 grams of nitrogen. For hydrogen, I'm replacing one mole of hydrogen with two grams. And for ammonia, I'm replacing one mole of ammonia with 17 grams of ammonia. But wait, there's more. When uh, we look at the radiation sign, there's still two more things to go. All three of these chemicals are gases, so I could also replace the molar mass, or one mole, with 22.4 liters for the gas. And finally, the fourth thing on the radiation sign was Avogadro's number of particles, so I could also throw that in here. It was just a little bit too big to cram all on one line, so the uh, hydrogen got moved down a little bit. But yeah, the pattern we're looking for here is the coefficient times a number off the radiation sign. And the coolest thing about all of this, they are all equivalent. One times one mole of nitrogen is equivalent to two times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of ammonia. You can pick any two of the expressions we just wrote, and they are equivalent to each other. Well, if they're equivalent, that means we can write a conversion factor from them. We can take one of these and stick it in the bottom of our conversion factor, and we can take a different one and stick it in the top of our conversion factor. So this approach gives us a way to write equivalence between reactants and products, and we're gonna build our conversion factors as needed for the dimensional analysis by using any two of these relationships. And we're going to build these conversion factors by taking the coefficient from the balanced equation and multiplying it times a, any one of the four things that we have on the radiation sign. And the way we decide how to, how to pull these things is just whatever we need to make units cancel out. Let's work an example. This says how many liters of oxygen are needed to burn 50 grams of methane? Well, if we're doing stoichiometry, which we are because we're doing two different chemicals, right? We're given an amount of methane and we're asked to find an amount of oxygen. So two chemicals means it's a stoichiometry problem. We're going to need to build conversion factors with two numbers in them. So we have to have a balanced chemical equation. So if we're going to burn methane, burning means reacting with oxygen from the air. And when a hydrocarbon, a compound containing carbon and hydrogen burns, the two products are carbon dioxide and water. So we've got to have an equation and we have to balance it. Looks like there's one carbon on both sides for the hydrogens. I have four on the left and only two on the right. So I'll put a coefficient of two in front of water. That gives me two oxygens from the water and another two from the carbon dioxide. So that's a grand total of four. So I need to put a coefficient of two in front of the oxygen. And now it looks like everything's balanced. Since I'm seeing grams with methane, that means that I'm going to have to use the molar mass. So to calculate the molar mass, of methane. I'm going to do that up here at the top. There's one carbon which weighs in at 12 and there are four hydrogens which weigh in at one. So that's going to be 16 grams for the molar mass. So now to get this process started, we're going to start by writing down the number, the unit, and the chemical that we're given. So 50 grams of methane. 
and we're going to place that over 1. Now, since there are two chemicals, we're going to need to put two numbers, but let's get this set up by making our units work out. If we start with grams of methane, then to make grams of methane cancel out, we need to stick grams of methane in the bottom of the next step. Now let's look for the unit in the chemical we're trying to find. We are trying to find liters of oxygen. So I'm going to write liters of oxygen in the top. Now notice we have two different chemicals, so I'm going to have to fill in two different numbers in the top and two different numbers in the bottom. So on the radiation side, the number that goes with liters is 22.4. So that's our first number. It's coming from the radiation side. The second number is the coefficient of oxygen in the balanced equation, which is a 2. Down on the bottom side, we have grams of methane. From the radiation sign, the number that goes with grams of methane is its molar mass. And the second number that we're going to fill in down here is the coefficient from the balanced equation, which is a 1. Now, if you like to simplify the numbers before you plug them into your calculator, you're more than welcome to do that. The 2 will go into the 16, uh, 50, and the resulting 8 can both be divided by 2, so there's some simplification you can do. At the moment, I'm just going to make my calculator do all the work, so I'm going to take 50 times 2 times 22.4 and divide by 16. When I do that, I get 140. That makes for 140 liters of O2. And just to demonstrate, let's take a look at our units. We started with grams of methane, and in the bottom of the next step, we have grams of methane as well, so they cancel out. And so yes, indeed, the only unit we have left is liters of O2. Before we work a bunch more examples, I just wanted to kind of outline the process for stoichiometry. First, you have to have a balanced equation. Without the coefficients, you can't do stoichiometry. Next, read the problem carefully and figure out what number we're given with its unit and the chemical. So we write down that number, we stick it over 1, and then we're going to multiply by a conversion factor. If we have two different chemicals, we're going to have to put two different numbers into that conversion factor. One of them comes from the radiation sign, and the other comes from the coefficient in the balance of the equation. Those two numbers are basically performing two different types of conversions. The number off the radiation sign is going to convert the unit for us. So it might convert grams to liters. The coefficient is what maintains the correct ratio of one chemical to another chemical. So essentially the coefficient converts the chemicals. In the next video, we're going to work a bunch more examples.